everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this video we're talking about the 2021 OWASP Top 10, and this is the number two security risk, and that is cryptographic failures. So this shifts up one position to number two from the previous uh, version. Uh, in fact, previously it was known as sensitive data exposure, but sensitive data exposure is more of a broad symptom rather than like a root cause. Um, and so the focus really is the failures related to cryptography, which then, of course, could lead to the exposure of sensitive data. So this one's called cryptographic failures, and it comes in at number two this, this, uh, this time. Okay, so the first thing you need to determine when you think about cryptographic failures is the protection needs of the data that you have in your application. So data in transit or data at rest. And so examples could be like passwords or credit card numbers or health or personal information, that kind of thing. Um, and especially if that data falls under any kind of privacy laws, like the European Union's uh, General Data Protection Regulation, the GDPR, or maybe the, uh, the PCI Data Security Standard, the PCI DSS, that's like financial data, that kind of thing. So if you have sensitive data, then you need to determine the protection needs of that data, right? So a few things that you can ask yourself are, in terms of your application, how you build out your application and protect it, is uh, do you use any kind of old or weak cryptographic algorithms or protocols? Um, do you have anything uh, where encryption is not enforced? Like, are there any HTTP headers uh, or security directors, security directives, I'm sorry, that are missing? Um, always use HTTPS, by the way. Don't, don't ever use HTTP, so always use encryption. Um, another thing to think about is key management. So is the server certificate and the trust chain properly validated, you know, so make sure that that key management is in place. And I know that that's a difficult thing to do, right? Um, another thing that I would mention quickly is don't write cryptographic, uh, you know, don't write crypto on your own, right? So use trusted libraries. Uh, a couple of good examples are like Google Tink or Libsodium. Those are two good examples of, of like cross-platform crypto libraries that you can use. So don't roll your own crypto, right? It's uh, that's just a good good uh, thing to, to do or think about, right? Um, all right, so I'm going to draw a quick uh, couple of scenarios here on maybe some examples of cryptographic failures in applications. And the first thing that I'll use is let's say you have users, um, you know, who are accessing your application here. So you got your app, and it's an awesome application, and this application is connected to you know a database back here. Uh, you know, that holds all kinds of good information, right? Let's say that there's maybe some like, you know, credit card numbers that are stored here in this database, right? Okay, so let's say a user accesses the application and then, you know, performs some kind of a, you know, credit card number, um, you know, query. And so then the application then, of course, sends uh, what would maybe be in like an SQL query back to the database. And let's say that the... Uh, that the numbers, that the credit card numbers in the database are automatically encrypted, which is great, right? So they're encrypted while they sit in here, but let's say that when this SQL uh, call is made to the database and then the response comes back from the database back to the user, then if this is written in such a way that that encryption automatically is reversed so that it's automatically decrypted when a user you know, pulls that data out of the database, then that's, uh, then that's a problem. So then what could happen at that point is you could have an attacker that could come in. So I'll just put, you know, attacker here. An attacker could come in and perform an injection attack, like a SQL injection, and grab data, or maybe a credit card number in this case, out of that database. And if it's automatically decrypted, then the attacker at that point would have access to that credit card number. So that's not, that's not good, right? Okay, so that's just one little scenario of a failure of, crypt of cryptography. In that case, it's good to use encryption, but it's bad to use automatic decryption, right? So that's just something to think about. The other scenario that I was going to mention is let's use the same application, um, and let's say that there's, you know, a variety of URLs. Uh, so, you know, I'll just say URL here, and that's one page, you know, and then here's another URL here, and that's another page. And let's say that this one uses HTTPS, which is good. So that's, a, I'll put a little smiley face by that one, right? And let's say that this one only uses HTTP, right? And that one is frowny face. That's bad because this one is in plain text. This one is encrypted. So let's say that you don't, again, enforce um, TLS or encryption for every single 
uh, page on your, you know, in your application. So what an attacker could do in this scenario is an attacker could listen to all of the traffic, uh, you know, sniff the traffic as it were, and if when the user um, accesses this page right here, then the attacker could just see all of that data in plain text, um, and so that's not good, of course. But then let's also say that if uh, if you don't, so so number one is you need to enforce HTTPS across the board, like I just said a minute ago. The other thing though is if you don't have strong cipher suites uh, configured on your servers, then an attacker could do a downgrade attack um, and, and downgrade you from a strong cryptography uh, down to a weaker cryptography. So let's say you, know, you go from um, you know, TLS 1 or TLS 1.2, whatever, down to like SSL v3 or you know, something crazy that's like super insecure, right? And some of the downgrade attacks that we've seen um, you know, fairly recently, I guess. There are a few examples would be like the poodle attack, the freak attack, the log jam attack. Those are three examples of downgrade attacks that we've seen. And so what could happen then is if you, if the attacker um, forces the user to downgrade the cryptography or downgrade the encryption that's used um, to a weaker version of TLS, that kind of thing, then the attacker could then, you know, use that, use vulnerabilities known exploits against that weaker uh, cryptography and then maybe like steal the, the session cookie and then replay that cookie, you know, to that, uh, to that URL, you know, replay that user's, that legitimate user's cookie to the application and then steal data that way. So that's another, you know, example of uh, cryptographic, of what would be cryptographic failures here. So make sure you use strong, uh, strong encryption, strong ciphers, those kinds of things. So I'll just mention a few things to kind of keep in mind in terms of cryptographic failures. Uh, one thing you need to do is when you have your application and as you look at your application, you need to classify the data that is processed by the application or, or stored or transmitted. And you need to, you need to uh, classify that. You need to identify which data is sensitive, which data is maybe not so sensitive. So then, you know, what do you need to really protect? What do you not? Um, and then you, that'll, that'll help guide you on like, hey, how strong do I need to protect different pages or that kind of thing, right? Um, and then another key thing that I would mention is don't store sensitive data unnecessarily, right? Discard it as soon as you possibly can um, or use, you know, if you've got PCI DSS, for example, use compliant tokenization or even truncation for, uh, for that type of data, right? Kind of a general rule of thumb there is that data that is not retained cannot be stolen, or at least it can't be stolen from you. And so that's what you want to do, right? Um, another thing that I would mention is encrypt all of your sensitive data at rest. Back to this little database example, you do want to encrypt it. Make sure you don't automatically decrypt it as well, right? So encrypt all your sensitive data at rest. And then make sure, on, and I mentioned this, make sure you use up-to-date strong um, algorithms and protocols and keys. Make sure you use proper key management. And I know that's easier said than done, but you need to have a good key management process uh, for your application. So those are, those are a few you know, pointers to think about when you think about cryptographic failures and how you um, can hopefully not be the victim of a cryptographic failure problem. Uh, but you know, this is obviously a big issue because it comes in, like I said, at number two on this, uh, this most recent version of the OWASP top 10. Uh, so stay safe out there and hopefully you won't have any cryptographic failures. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.